ladies and gentlemen, and being a producer of Wrestle Massacre, as well as Inside Movies Galore, I am David Stregi, and welcome to Delusions of Grandeur. Enjoy the reviews. I certainly did. college flunkies. I've had enough of this from you and from everyone else. I know what you guys are trying to do. Break me down, drive me out of the force. Well, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than a lame prank like this to get Curtis Mooney to throw in his badge. So fuck you. Over. Um, reviews on some films that have the title name of Nemesis, which are directed by Albert Payoon. Uh, who lives in Hawaii at this point in time. And, um, yeah, uh, this, isn't, this is not his uh, first um, journey into the cyborg universe, uh, but um, it stars, uh, stars Oliver Gruner as uh, Alex. And this is a cyborg that has... Uh, <laughs> Um, he's definitely an agent of espionage, um, where he's an L.A. cyborg cop, and he is sent on a mission uh, uh, and forced to, uh, find his partner and cyborg uh, partner slash lover, Jared, who is about to deliver some sensitive information to some cyborg terrorists but uh the film begins with his narration and <laughs> we see that he is um he is tracked down by the uh, these cyborgs that are in league with farnsworth and uh, evidently farnsworth is the the character that has basically built him uh, 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 from the ground up. And <laughs> Farnsworth is played by Tim Th uh, Thomerson, which if, if anyone knows uh, anything about Tim, uh, Tim Thomerson, he was the main character in Doll Man, which has something to do with the full moon universe and uh, Empire Pictures, I believe. So... Albert Payoon and his work uh, with um, Charles Band kind of hooked him up with some of these actors that are involved in here. But what's interesting is that uh, that some of the actors and actresses in here, here um, went on to do other films that uh, I, I know and love. Like uh, we have uh, Carrie T uh, Tagawa, who plays Angie Liv in here, uh, which evidently he plays kind of like a Hong Kong detective kind of uh, 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 guy who seems to be kind of like part mafia in, in in here, and he just wants to know what Alex is doing in in the area. And now, from what I g uh, gather, he is l looking for looking for uh, for someone in the very beginning, and then he comes across across this young wolf pup, which evidently grows up with him. And uh, be, uh, because he was shot down by the specific female, uh, a, a, a female that went for Farnsworth, he eventually ended up in uh, sitting in the club or 
uh, bar that uh, that uh, this woman was in, and he shot her down in cold blood. Well, evidently that kind of plays in mind with uh, what happens later. Um, one of the th one of the things that I thought that was kind of cruel was uh, the fact that one of the one of the uh, cyborgs that uh, w was working for Farnsworth actually shot that dog that uh, that we see um, that he kind of helped grow up and so w when Alex is forced by Farnsworth to go find you know his lo a lover. I mean, he basically puts a bomb inside his uh, inside his chemistry, inside his body, uh, that uh, evidently it can go off at any, at any given point in time. Uh, so they, in a sense, they have some kind of a control. Um, now, um, he's supposed to meet up with a, a couple of people, and uh, one of them ends up being a cyborg of some sort, and the other seems to be um, a character that is the um, person that thought that he was going to um, be in on the whole deal, and <laughs> vice versa. But um, this uh, uh, this woman, which I believe her 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 name was Max Impact, she she helped. She helped Alex get uh, get at least some uh, 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 kind of thing to help with the bomb, and but um, another uh, another young lady, I believe, was um, was there to avenge her sister, which she was a uh, she was a short haired. Uh, red-haired uh, gal, which um, I believe that she played. Uh, pl she was played by. Um, Deborah Shelton. So, we definitely have a, a lot of characters here involved. So, uh, some of them um, pl played in the Star Trek universe. Uh, 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 like I was uh, beginning to say, T Tagawa, who played Angie Liv, he play, uh, pl uh, played um, in Mortal Kombat uh, l uh, later on, either later on or earlier, and uh, so on and so forth. I thought the action in here was de uh, uh, was definitely cool. Uh, 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 there was a part where um, Oliver Gruner was sliding uh, down backwards, shooting, uh, shooting at... Um, shooting at the uh, cyborgs and uh, there was a moment where um, one of the cyborgs I believe it was possibly Farnsworth uh, had actually gone after a helicopter and uh, you could see it bare bones it was it kind of reminded me a little bit of Terminator which had actually been a film that had been uh, in 1989 and uh, when I said that Albert Payan uh, uh, this was his second venture into the cyborg universe. That is because he um, he had um, directed Cyborg in 1989 as well, which um, starred Van Damme. So um, he definitely, I th I think he lived up to his um, uh, to his action uh, <laughs> uh, in this film and I, I liked the different characters though they were very different um, by na uh, by nature I mean I loved the fact that he was on the run um, there was a, a little bit of a love interest um, and for uh, uh, for some reason there was kind of like a love hate relationship between that ca uh, character that uh, was after him because he killed her sister and uh, she was kind of an oddball, but um, all in all, I thought that I actually have a kind of a love for this uh, 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 film. So um, there were definitely, um, there was definitely 
something that I could I liked about the fi uh, film, and I enjoyed it. But I have to say something. Uh, this film should not have, have to be related to the other three films. And that being sa said, if you enjoyed my description of this film, um, definitely like and subscribe uh, to our channel. Um, I definitely uh, enjoyed see uh, seeing the uh, seeing the action involved. Although it did somewhat play on the Terminator universe, um, I thought that it was definitely a different uh, a, a different look at what we could uh, create um, with. Um, some of the beginnings of C uh, CGI and so on and so forth. So, um, if you in enjoy films of this nature, then you can definitely choose to f uh, find the fi uh, film um, if you want to. The only way that I could find the film is in this German box set, which I'll show you it now. Um, and this has all four of uh, them uh, in this set. And it turns out that this German Blu-ray set, I think it's also a, a, in a DVD set, but um, as far as I know, this is all region. Now, there is actually a, a more out-of-print uh, set that, uh, that is from the same company, which um, I believe this is from DigiDream Studios. And uh, it says that the, uh, these are uncut and fully HD remasters. But this is a set from germany so um it's definitely definitely was an interesting buy when i uh, found it and i i thought it it was great that uh they were all regions so uh if uh but this is the only way that you can find the films in any way shape or form except for on vhs and that is rare to find the, uh, them on vhs because vhs is out of print in any case if uh if you enjoyed my thoughts on the uh, film, um, definitely like and subscribe. I I definitely thought the women in here were very beautiful. Um, and uh, I think that th uh, this was a very decent um, add to the action genre. So um, I, I have a personal love for this film. I saw it early uh, 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 90s. Uh, Probably on TNT uh, uh, late one night. At night, I saw bits and pieces of it, and uh, uh, once I f uh, finally saw it again, uh, which was relatively recently, uh, then I uh, put p uh, pieces together of what I had actually seen. Um, so finally saw it in its full capacity. So I definitely enjoyed it. Um, so. Definitely check it out if you if you find a copy of it. In any case, uh, enjoy your day, morning, or afternoon as it uh, as it were. Thank you for listening. All them politicians down there, and them congressmen, and the congressmen, boy, I bet you won't find none of them congressmen signing down their electric blankets tonight. Cause if they did, their secretaries would get up and go home. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I'm your host, David Streggy, and tonight I have another film uh, review from Albert Payune's uh, film series, uh, Nemesis, uh, which this is the second film uh, from 1995. Um, Starring Sue Price um, with Filmworks and uh, Imperial Entertainment. Uh, and uh, like I said um, in my previous review, um, I have been working off the German Blu ray uh, box set, and uh, this one is called ne uh, Nemesis to Nebula. And uh, so in the very beginning, we have uh a, a woman that evidently is carrying a child and she has appeared from a um what looks like a a silver rubik's cube that is kind of flat 
um, that ends up in the um, early 80s of Africa. And uh, somehow she ends up dying and uh, the child grows up in the tribe. And the, uh, the child uh, goes by the name of Alex. Um, and she, she ends up having to go through some, uh, because there is a jealous um, warrior um, that wants to challenge her for her strength. Um, that she challenges for the right of being part of the tribe, uh, my guess. And now Sue Price is actually uh, from from Illinois. Um, she is from Mount Prospect, Illinois, and she is a bodybuilder. Um, so at the time, um, she was really big in the bodybuilding um, um, competitions and all that jazz. So she was physically fit, uh, but she was also pretty at the same time. She had dreads. Um, and uh, so this was kind of a, this was definitely kind of a sword and sandal kind of, uh, uh, kind of, uh, um, you know, Rockwell Welsh uh, kind of look for uh, for her. So it, it's not that we saw her naked. We uh, we it, we definitely saw her clothed. But um, during the film, there uh, uh, they actually do give a beautiful look at her backside. <laughs> um, but um, in any case, there is a cyborg that is sent after her. <coughs> that is called nebula and he is uh, he has come in search of her to take her back to um wherever he uh, he has come for, uh, from and uh but um she meets some characters along uh, along the way one of them being a pilot and one of them um being just a, another female that was just along for the ride uh, so we uh, we we definitely have a few characters, and uh, uh, there's a few um, other characters that seem to be like they are um, they are slavers of some sort that uh, that are on the that are in Africa at that point in time. So they are dealing in um, selling human humans on a black market trade uh, type of thing. So um, there's definitely a, a little, a little bit of action there. But here's the thing: it's a, uh, if I had seen this movie at the time that it came out, I would have thought that it was a really bad film, especially uh, since it was not probably not HD uh, in HD, and it, it was definitely of a lower film quality. At, at the time, so, uh, so uh, another thing, it is heavily, uh, it, it it is heavily infiltrated with um, CGI effects that uh, that were trademarks of Predator. So I believe that um, it is very possible that this film could have actually gotten into some kind of trouble uh, with. Pre uh, with the Predator films, be uh, because you know the, uh, the uh, this um, cyborg was uh, you you couldn't um, there was a specific way that uh, that the Predator creature uh, creature was um, all fuzzy li uh, like and kind of distorted, uh, where it was more hologramish, uh, and. Uh, this uh, th uh, this is something that was very noticeable about this uh, this creature, um, this the cyborg that uh, that was after her, and it just would not die. So um, to me, I I could not have an entire love for this uh, film. It was relative, uh, relatively bad for uh, uh, because of that, and. But there were aspects of the film that uh, that I was enjoying so uh, somewhat half. I mean, it's it's halfway through when they got uh, uh, got to sh uh, showing that they uh, they were almost uh, they were pretty they were ripping off the film. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ! I mean, 
it's one thing to entire uh, to, uh, to entirely pay tribute to a film. It's another to entirely rip it off. And I, I'm not sure whether um, this was something that Albert was doing at that point in time uh, purposely or whether he was just trying to create his own originality with the series. But I can't honestly recommend th th that this film be seen in conjunction with the first film. I just can't see that connection. I mean, I see that it's in, within the world. I mean, it's in a post-apocalyptic world, but I just... I mean, there uh, th there were some action uh, th uh, that uh, that I liked about this uh, film. I, I uh, I'm not gonna lie, but it was just confusing. You, you you can't have it in the same world and then you know mix it with another very popular film, you know, and uh, that to me. Um, <laughs> that to me was a very strong um, made me dislike the film a little bit and uh, uh, to each their own you know um, but if this film sounds like something that you would definitely like or uh, uh, like or want to see then definitely check it out in your own fashion and uh, find that set that uh, uh, that's in German it's definitely all region um, and uh, it, it's kind of cool to own. So in any case, uh, like and subscribe to my page if you uh, uh, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, say them in the, uh, the comments. But, uh, but um, I mean, I kind of I kind of was in the middle on this one, uh, this one. And uh, it was almost a no go. <laughs> in any case, um, Definitely check my uh, my other reviews out. Uh, I, I try to be, be as truthful as possible, and uh, I enjoyed uh, trying to describe it in my own way. So uh, uh, everyone's going to have a different opinion. So definitely check my reviews out when uh, when and uh, when and if you can. Um, I'd love to hear your opinion on the film if you have seen it. Talk to you later. Bye. And you put them in there. the face you had on you when you come back in the polls. Well, the Democrats' way of running this country is to go tell us all how we ought to make sacrifices. God, they're great on that stuff. <laughs> but they're all gonna have us over the hill to the poorhouse. We ain't gonna be able to drive over there because we ain't got no gas, so we're gonna have to walk it. Oh, the Reader's Digest says walking is very good for you. <laughs> Oh, ain't that lovely? The Reader's Digest can always put a little joy into poverty. <laughs> this is my whole pain. My whole pain is this whole thing. So, welcome back to Inside Movies Galore, where I... Uh, have been reviewing Albert Pion's Nemesis film series, and this madness just gets worse and worse. <laughs> we have the character of Alex, which is funny because Alex is the name of the cyborg in the uh, first uh, 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 Nemesis. We have to the original film is that Farnsworth has returned as a cyborg uh, um, because evidently Farnsworth either has been killed or um, has been replaced by this Farnsworth 2, um, which has somehow um, come to the planet to find the um, character of Alex, which um, who is played by Sue Price once again, which, which I'm glad that uh, she has returned as this character so that it, it kind of keeps, you know, so, uh, uh, some of the storyline. And we, we end up um, seeing that Alex's character has her head's been bashed in. She's found kind of like 
uh, kind of like Simba in the middle of the de uh, uh, desert from Lion uh, the Lion King, and except she doesn't have any buzzards around her. Uh, well, in any case, Farnsworth uh, uh, two um, shows uh, you. I mean, you you see that it is machine, but it shows up to us uh, as the actor Tim Thomerson. Uh, to her, so it, it's more uh, more personable for uh, this amnesiac um, of Alex. And as as she starts to talk to this Barnesworth to um, pre um, cyborg, she begins to remember um, remember her memory. And uh, what her memory is, is it actually kind of flashbacks to uh, different th things. Like, apparently, um, Alex's character has a sister, and the sister has been factioned away somewhere or um, um, kidnapped. So evidently, she ha uh, her character has gone on a mission to find this sister of hers, and uh, she runs into several different characters, um, some military, some of them looking like the slavers that we see in the first fil uh, uh, film, because evidently all the Africans have been killed. Um, but uh, we also have these two Gemini looking twi uh, uh, twins that are cyborgs that are working for Farnsworth too, that are uh, and a another muscle do a uh, dude that evidently is kind of working for uh, uh, for um, uh, them as well. So um, so there is a character that uh, that she meets that is part of a military faction, probably of a. Um, of an American military, or at least a British one, and um, he evidently is kind of a merchant uh, of sorts because he is uh, he is basically after she fights with some after Alex fights with some characters, he's basically taking and uh, going through the uh, uh, the things that are on the bodies of the uh, the, the dead. Um, uh, the uh, the dead, and he's basically collecting what he needs to go al along on whatever mission that he is, and somehow he ends up on the same mission as she is. But he's kind of like this rogue uh, warrior. But she also runs into um, another uh, 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 another group where uh, where evidently there's this dumb um, uh, character by the name of Johnny and. Uh, he is played by Xavier Des uh, Desley or Deckley, um, but uh, evidently he was uh, uh, the, one of the smartest and best warriors that evidently that merchant kn knew, and that uh, that would be Edson, um, played by Norbert uh, Weiser, uh, the, the the rogue that I am speaking of, and um, so somehow his. His memories were taken away away from him as well, so uh, ultimately they go up against the um, character of Farnsworth in the end. And uh, for some reason, Nebula uh, has taken the shape and uh, and form of the mother of Alex, um, who um, who has returned, which uh, which is. Uh, which we see her fleeing and coming to the the uh, desert of Africa before she has been um, killed herse uh, herself, and uh, so uh, so this is kind of a a different. Um, I believe that um, her sister's name is Locke, um, and uh, she is played by Sharon Brunel. Um, but we have the char uh, characters. We definitely have some interesting characters here, but uh, this whole film is kind of discombobulated. It still heavily, um, uh, heavily rips on uh, uh, the 
a CGI used in uh, Predator, and uh, not only does it rip on the um, way that the Predator is seen, um, there is uh, there is a vehicle that looks like a doom buggy that it is somewhat um, distorted uh, when it goes along, and there is a chase in this dune buggy that is kind of comical, and for uh, for some reason this just kind of feels like a bad movie, and it is, uh, and it's not that it's entirely a bad film because I feel like the cinematography is beautiful, but I. Uh, just was not feeling the the vibe again. It was just all over the place. I mean, the it was just it was it was just not right. And for uh, uh, some reason, he should have stopped there. And I, I feel like this uh, this film could have been be uh, better if it had been created with its own originality without ripping off uh, uh, you know movies that are popular to us and it's it's not that i d didn't like the characters or anything like that it's just the storyline uh, 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 the storyline wasn't that bad either it was just the the the, the cgi effects were ripped off and i feel like i feel like this wasn't an homage to uh, to the films that i know that it was ripping off of and i could see how people at the time did not li uh, like the film again i i can see where uh, where the filmmaker was going with this film i just don't like the way that it was gone about and uh it is so if this film sounds like something that you would definitely watch then you can you can find it for yourself on your own i watched it from this german ed edition um which i have talked about previously and uh i just um I just couldn't really get into it and it, even uh, though some of it was slightly interesting it was still a bad bad film and i just i just don't know what uh, what else to, uh, to, uh, to say I, I can't exactly praise it so in any case like and subscribe i, I definitely enjoy trying to describe this a film i know uh, know that other people have but and you know what this is my um my take on it and uh you can either like it or love it or leave it and uh in any case d thanks for listening check out my other um uh, reviews and uh hopefully you like and subs uh, subscribe and have a nice day afternoon or morning as you see fit it's refreshment time folks time out for a delicious snack in our sparkling refreshment building Every item a fresh, appetizing taste treat. We've a large assortment of freshly made sandwiches. How about a pizza? None better anywhere. Sizzling hamburgers grilled to your taste. Mouth-watering chili dillies. Dog days, hot dog days that is, somehow have a way of turning out to be fun days. The pop and sizzle of the juicy meat seems to say, come and get me, I'm done to a turn. Yep, hungry or not, it's hard to resist the tantalizing aroma and taste appeal of a sizzling hot dog. The nice part of it is, there's one waiting for you right now at the refreshment stand. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm David Streggy on Inside Movies Galore. And uh, here I am returning to the world of uh, Nemesis with Nemesis 4 uh, from the um, only place that, that I can connect, which uh, is from Germany, which is our region. And uh, it, it is... A Blu-ray set, um, and 
it's called Death Angel or Cry of Angels, uh, uh, so to speak, directed by Albert Payune in 1996. And um, it goes back to the story of um, Alex and and the, uh, that would be Alex Sinclair, which uh, which Sue Price, the bodybuilder uh, from the previous two uh, two films, has returned, um, where she is kind of a contract killer. For the race of cyborgs and she works for a, ma a man or a cyborg by the name of bernardo and so in the very beginning we do have um a priest being evidently taken out by alex and then she returns to wherever bernardo evidently is and then she is told that maybe that she should retire after this because she is getting older um as a cyborg and but he has one more hit uh planned for her and uh it should be a simple a simple and sh a shut hit so what uh, so what she does is she go, uh, uh, goes out and really believes that she that she is uh, uh, goes out and kills this mexican looking cy uh, cyborg with a white carnation um attached to him but she ends up supposedly killing the wrong uh person who ends up being um carlos jr who is evidently the uh only true son of a, a mafia hitman who is actually really you know really high up there um in the criminal wor uh, world so uh, ultimately there is a woman in black who seems to follow alex's character and um for much of the film alex sue price's character is is naked and when a, when a hit is taken out on her and Bernardo double crosses her, uh, her she uses she uses her sex appeal and her, uh, her legs to kill you know kill the people that uh, that want to kill her and what uh, what I like is that uh, uh, that some of uh, some of the some of the names involved in here, like uh, like Earl Typhoon. Evidently, she uh, he was a cyborg lover of hers, who uh, uh, who was played by Nicholas Guest, um, and uh, Earl's character ultimately scratches her with uh, with some kind of implant which was kind of interesting because her blood turned from uh like a bluish goo to uh, like a greenish yellow um afterwards and that is what ultimately was going to eventually kill her eventually um but um when it uh, when the story ultimately came into play she actually um ended up calling her ex-lover johnny impact to uh come and try to um try to kill her and that's when she found out who uh, 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 that the woman in black was in fact the mother of this car uh, i think i think was in fact the mother of this carlos jr who was uh, supposedly go uh, going to take her out or uh, uh, kind of played this angel of mercy 
uh, thing. Now, after she had actually killed this priest in the very beginning, she had actually seen this um, woman in black in with a few characters that almost reminded me of some of the makeup and the dr uh, dress up in um, in the purge. It, it's like um, I, I thought that you know. I thought that the gothic look uh, look to uh, some of these um, cyborgs that were uh, shooting at her um, was definitely purge like, but I thought that there was an interesting character in um, Takuda, um, where he was just the cyborg who seemed to uh, to um evidently have a torturous type nature to uh, to uh, to him there was definitely a lot of dialogue in the film um but i actually liked that there was a lot of dialogue i liked that uh, that you got to um learn some uh, some of uh, what how uh, some of how these characters worked and uh, how they worked behind uh, each, uh, each other and Bernardo's character played by uh, Andrew Diboff he kind of reminded me of like a Matrix type character where he kind of reminded me of Hugo Weaving in a way um, in the way that he, he um, spoke and his mannerisms at, at least when he uh, played that a, a computer um, character that was going after Neo's ca a, a character. So, um, but for being a very different f uh, film um, and for being so much of a showcase for um, Sue Price's um, physique. Meanwhile, by be, uh, by uh, while still keeping that feminism about her, um, I I actually really enjoyed this uh, this um, this film. I I liked that uh, that it was mo uh, less of a um, steal off of. A predator, even though it still it used some uh, 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 some of the um, phase out type quality, like when uh, when you see in Predator, <coughs> you see you you only see the monster in this like phase out, out of focus, you know, halo of. Um, where you only get to see a little, a little bit of the character, and that uh, uh, that's what you see surrounding this woman in black. Uh, you, you don't really get to see what she entirely looks like until you know until she's been killed, and uh, the hood is uh, 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 is turned back and reveals who she is. And um, I like that this character was somewhat in the background, and and in a sense, she was like this. A uh, looming character, uh, uh, just in case that Alex Sinclair's character died, as she was kind of like a grim reaper of character, uh, so to speak. And uh, I thought that there was a very interesting love scene in here as well. Um, normally, I'm not uh, really physically attracted to women that uh, are overly muscular or what uh, whatnot, but in this film, um, I actually thought that Sue Price actually looked somewhat sexy in the love scene. Uh, I was relatively surprised since uh, in the previous two f uh, films it seemed like um 
it seemed like that uh, it, it was all about showcasing her muscles, even though you got to see um, somewhat of her backside in the last two. And here in this film, you got to see more of her. Um, and I, I actually have a, an appreciation for bodybuilding uh, bodybuilders that are female because of this film. So I'm I'm intrigued uh, 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 to watch more films that have women that have a physique that uh, that is uh, evidently more healthy and um, more muscular, even though that type of woman does not exactly attract me. Um, I thought that she looked attractive in this film and uh I, I thought that when she was wearing the dress i don't think she was um entirely used to wearing a dress at least of that nature i think uh, i think i think even that was a little bit awkward for her um but i i would have to say that the, uh, this film stands out and um i ha i have I would have to say I have a unique likeness to this film. And uh, so if you you have enjoyed my review on this film, I, I, de I definitely enjoyed watching this film. I'm glad that I finally um, finished the, uh, this um, film franchise, uh, at least as up to date as it is. I know that there are, uh, are other films that are planned in, uh, to... Um, go along with this uh, franchise in the future, and I'm intrigued as to what uh, what uh, what uh, what lies in store uh, for this world. Uh, just to see exactly uh, what is touched on uh, when um, Sue Price returns to the roles, um, and uh, vice versa. Um, I would definitely be curious as to where he could go uh, take the story from here. In any case, definitely take a look at my other reviews of the other films, and uh, hopefully you have enjoyed my thoughts on this film. I I don't th uh, 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 think that Sue Price should get as much flack as, uh, as she gets uh, uh, for... Um, looking like a male or anything like that. I think she uh, looks very beautiful. Um, and I think that this film um, portrays her in a very good light. And I thought that her acting was really good in this film too. Um, in any case, hopefully you li liked my thoughts on this film. I certainly enjoyed sharing it with you. Um, and, uh, I look forward to, uh, looking at, uh, other films directed by Albert Payoon. He definitely has a place in film history and, uh, definitely check them out if you can. Um, in any case, have a good afternoon, um, or a good morning as it may be. And, uh, I will definitely have some cool, uh, films to talk about um, next time you see me. In any case, see you around. You were good, kid, real good. But as long as I'm around, you'll always be second best, see? This is my whole plan. My whole plan is this whole thing with the energy and everything. This is all a conspiracy. No, you know that? It's a conspiracy there. Listen. For years, all our lives, they've been telling us to go out and buy stuff that use energy. You know, all electrical stuff. We got electric toasters, electric ovens, electric stove, electric stereo, electric TV, electric race, electric hair blower, electric knives, electric every damn thing. Not to mention the cars. And now, after all the big corporations there make the billions and billions of dollars worth of profits, signals, wham, they're changed. And after telling us for years that we can't live without this junk, now they tell us that we gotta live without it. The country is going straight into the dumper. 